Hi everyone, my name is Paul Rösler and the paper about combiners for AEAD that I present today is joint work together with Bertram Pöttering. When we talk about AEAD, we mean symmetric encryption, meaning that the encryption algorithm takes a symmetric key, uh, some message together with data that is potentially associated to this message and a nonce. And the output of this encryption algorithm is a ciphertext that results when being invoked in decryption together with the same associated data, the same nonce and the same symmetric key in the same message being output as I said, on the decryption side. This is the correctness requirement. For security, we require confidentiality, meaning that the ciphertext output by the encryption is indistinguishable from a random bit string of the same length as a valid ciphertext. And we also require authenticity, meaning that um, ciphertext output by the encryption cannot be manipulated such that they are still accepted by the decryption algorithm meaning that any manipulation or any uh, crafting of ciphertexts by an adversary result in a rejection of the decryption algorithm. There are plenty real-world used uh, AEAD schemes, for example G GCM or OCB3 or many newly presented in the CESA competition. And as I said, they are used in almost all modern real-world communication protocols to protect uh, the actual payload. The problem is if one of the AAD schemes that we regularly use in practical deployment turns out to be insecure. And this can be the case as, for example, the papers on OCB2 last year showed us. So what should we do if such a thing can happen? Uh, we would like to minimize risk and one way to minimize risk is to combine multiple AEAD schemes in which we trust and thereby if either of these uh, AEAD schemes afterwards turns out to be insecure, then we can still hope that the other two or the other one remains secure. So in this example here, what we would like to have if we combine GCM with OCB3 and uh, an, an AEAD scheme that follows the encrypt and MAC paradigm, then we would like to have that as long as only one of these schemes remains secure, the entire com uh, combination remains secure. The question is of course, how can we do this and how can we do this such that it fulfills both the security requirements but also potentially other for example, performance requirements. Before I explain this to you, I give you some further motivations that uh, give you an idea why combiners are useful. For example, developers might be forced to use specific AEAD schemes that they don't trust in. Think of, for example, some standards that require triple DES used with some um, non-usual uh, block mode and such developers still want to have a secure uh, encryption or a secure uh, yeah, way to protect payload and therefore a combiner can help to fulfill the, both the requirements from the standards but also the trust and security requirements by the developers. There are other reasons, for example, sometimes proofs are not correct, for example, for the OCB2 proof, but also a previous proof of the GCM uh, mode has been wrong, still GCM appears to be secure. So there are plenty of reasons to use combiners in reality. But for using them in reality, there might be further properties that we want to achieve with or for such combiners. For example, we would like to have few assumptions on the used underlying AEAD schemes. So ideally, every combiner works for any AEAD scheme in uh, the real world, meaning that we don't want to assume special properties other than security, normal syntax and correctness. Also, the uh, combiners should be very clear. So when looking at, looking at them, it should be clear how they work, how they are implement, uh, implemented, because otherwise they are useless for solving the problems that we are pro uh, approaching here. Also, the proofs should be easy to verify and validate, because otherwise, again, uh, we do not result in anything that helps us to minimize risk and uh, establish trust in, in the combination. 
Also, we don't want to use any further cryptographic building blocks because again, this introduces something that we need to assume and uh, trust in, in order to have a secure combination. Finally, we would like to have performance, uh, good performance, uh, particularly because if we combine multiple AEAD schemes anyways, we introduce a performance uh, reduction due to invoking each underlying combined AEAD scheme at least once, both in encryption and decryption. And so what we would like to have is that the combiner itself does not produce any further overhead. Okay. So what we did in our work is we present uh, or we presented four different AEAD combiners. The first one being a black box combiner, meaning that this combiner does not assume any further properties from the underlying AEAD schemes. And this combiner is, as I will show you in this talk, and uh, as you can see in our paper, already very performant. We provide three further uh, AEAD uh, combiners a ciphertext translation combiner and two encrypt and MAC combiners that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, although this black box combiner is already very performant, um, these uh, special combiners that assume some special properties from the combined AEAD schemes achieve an even better performance. So what I mean with even optimal for the black box combiner is that for the case that we don't assume any further properties for the combined AEAD schemes, this is even optimal. So uh, we will, or I will give you a short idea of why this is the case at the end of this talk. So we begin with the black box combiner, understanding how it is built. As I mentioned, this black box combiner does not assume any further uh, special properties from the combined AEAD schemes, meaning that they only provide uh, a generic syntax and generic security requirements that I mentioned before. Keep in mind that if we combine two AEAD schemes, only one of them needs to be secure, such that still the combined encryption and decryption provide our required security uh, properties. So the idea of our black box combiner is that it nests encryption. So the first encryption is uh, an input to the second encryption and on the receiver side, uh, the decryption is uh, conducted in the reverse direction. If we look at the details, you see that uh, our pseudocode um, essentially just invokes the encryption on the input message and the output ciphertext is then uh, encrypted with the second AEID scheme. And as I mentioned, this is reversed on uh, decryption. For achieving integrity, if we know that the outer encryption provides uh, authenticity and integrity, then we know that the ciphertext in transmission is integrity protected. But if this is not the case, meaning that the outer encryption is not secure, but only the inner encryption, then uh, we follow uh, the following idea. What, what our combiner does is it first decrypts the outer layer. And then what we know by the guarantees that if the outer layer is insecure, then we know that the inner layer is secure, giving us uh, con um, yeah, confirmation that the inner ciphertext is indeed integrity protected. Since the AEAD scheme is deterministic, meaning that the encryption will produce, if it is invoked on the same ciphertext, again, the same outer ciphertext. So what we do here is we re-invoke the encryption that is also invoked on the encryption in the combined encryption. And if we know that the inner ciphertext C0 is already integrity protected, then what the outer encryption should produce if, uh, if the ciphertext has not been manipulated is exactly the same ciphertext that has been input. So if the input ciphertext equals the re-encryption of the inner ciphertext, then we know that the ciphertext has not been manipulated. If it has been manipulated, then uh, the combined decryption rejects uh, this ciphertext and what we obtain is a uh, guarantee that if either of the two schemes prote uh, protects integrity of the ciphertext, then we know that the combined ciphertext is also integrity protected. This idea of re-encrypting and uh, escalating the integrity of a message to the integrity of a ciphertext 
can be used generically, meaning that any in, uh, uh, integrity of the plain text can be uh, transform, transformed with this re-encryption to integrity of the ciphertext, which is what we prove in uh, our paper. So this nested encryption paradigm that we use in our black box combiner is equally used in all remaining uh, combiners for protecting confidentiality. This uh, integrity recomputation idea is also used in our ciphertext translation scheme. What we assume for the ciphertext translation scheme is for the dark blue uh, scheme that is uh, sketched here in the lower left uh, corner is that the associated data is processed independent of the actual message. And then this process associated data is on encryption simply XORed onto the ciphertext that is produced by the encryption. And on the decryption, it can again be um, processed independent of the ciphertext. And then again, XORed such that the, the actual ciphertext can be uh, processed. And this gives us a performance uh, increase on the decryption side, side, which I will show you in a second. So first observe that due to encrypting twice on combined encryption in our black box combiner, and then decrypting twice on the decryption side plus one encryption, the processing of this combiner is as follows. We process data in the size of the message twice on encryption and twice on decryption. And twice some data that is associated to the message on the encryption side and tries on the decryption side. And it is clear that any ways we would need to uh, invoke each underlying encryption scheme once and each underlying decryption scheme at least once if we want to have the guarantees of a combiner, which gives us the, uh, an idea why our encryption is already optimal, but the decryption of course invokes once uh, an algorithm more. We will see that this is actually inevit inevitable for uh, black box combiners. As I mentioned, the ciphertext translation can exploit the way that the encryption and decryption for such ciphertext translation schemes work and therefore we obtain uh, optimal performance regarding the processing of data uh, both on the encryption side for message and associated data and on the decryption side only for associated data, meaning that we achieve even better performance. For our Encrypt and Mac combiners, uh, one and two on the right side, we assume that either one underlying scheme or even both underlying schemes follow the Encrypt and Mac um, paradigm, meaning that the light blue and the purple uh, AEAD schemes are essentially encryption methods and Mac methods. And what these schemes or what these combiners do for achieving integrity is on the one hand for the for the first encrypt and Mac combiner uh, that either the outer encryption or an attached uh, Mac tag from uh, the encrypt, encrypt and Mac scheme protect integrity, which is then verified either by the outer decryption or uh, the Mac verification on the combined decryption. And for the second encrypt and Mac combiner, what we do is we again nest encryption as for all our combiners and then compute Mac tags with both Mac schemes from both underlying AEAD schemes and simply XOR them uh, and thereby on the decryption, combined decryption, again, these Mac tags are verified and if either of both protects integrity, then we know that the entire ciphertext is integrity protected. So what we do with our Encrypt and Mac combiner, number one is that we distribute the computation, uh, uh, computation processing performance equally be between uh, combined encryption and combined decryption. And what we achieve with our second Encrypt and Mac combiner is that the transmitted ciphertext is optimal in terms of the transmitted size of the ciphertext. Because the ciphertext contains on the one hand the nested encryption of uh, the message, which is uh, in size of the message plus the overhead that is potentially applied due to encryption, which is usually negligible, plus the size of the longest of both uh, of the MAC tags, which is potentially optimal if the MAC tags are optimal in size. Okay, so 
What we see here again is the performance of all of our four combiners. You can see the details in our paper. What I would like to look at now is the optimality of processing of the underlying AEAD schemes for the case that we don't assume any further properties from the underlying AEAD schemes. What I, what I mean by that is the question of whether our black box combiner is potentially even optimal, even though the decryption, uh, the combined decryption invokes one of the underlying schemes more than only once. What I mean with optimal is um, here we see that the theoretically optimal uh, variant of a combiner would invoke each underlying algorithm at most or exactly once both on combined encryption and co on combined decryption. But the question is whether there exists any um, uh, combiner that can essentially only uh, use uh, each underlying scheme exactly once. So wh whether this is possible. Because if it is not, not possible, then our uh, black box combiner is essentially already optimal because what we do is we invoke each underlying uh, algorithm exactly once plus one further invocation. Okay, in order to analyze this, uh, we consider all possible variants to combine uh, AEAD schemes. These variants of com combining AEAD schemes can be categorized into the following two uh, categories. On the one hand, synchronized uh, combiners that invoke both underlying uh, AEAD schemes on the encryption side in the same order as well as their decryption algorithms are invoked in the combined decryption. And the second case is the reverse case where the encryption on the combined encryption is invoked in the reversed order of the decryption. Okay, so what you can observe here is that all remaining cases of combinations can be reduced to either of these two cases. Okay. So for showing that there exists no such combiner that only follows either of these two variants in order to provide the uh, guarantees that we want to have from a combiner, meaning that only one of the underlying schemes needs to provide security such that the entire uh, combiner is secure, we consider four different uh, weak AEAD schemes that we combine with arbitrarily strong AEAD schemes. And we show with these weak schemes that in any case in which uh, one of these uh, schemes is combined with a secure one, a combiner cannot achieve security. Okay, so these four uh, AEAD schemes are as follows. They all attach on the encryption side a uh, bit uh, in case A, uh, the last bit of each ciphertext is a zero bit and this last bit is also verified on the decryption side for the AEAD scheme number one or uh, number A. The B AEAD scheme uh, attaches always a one bit to every ciphertext and also on decryption again is that it is verified whether the last bit of a ciphertext equals one. The schemes C and D behave equal uh, to the ones uh, from A and B, meaning that C always attaches a zero and D always attaches a one on encryption side. But on decryption, both these schemes are tolerant, meaning that they just ignore the last bit that is attached to the ciphertexts on encryption side. And what we show then in our proof is that a combiner cannot distinguish cases A and B from C and D such that it can react on uh, the potential tolerance of, uh, of decryptions for cases C and D. So what we essentially show is that the cases A and B behave equal to the ones of C and D on encryption side and thereby the combiners cannot do anything on encryption side to protect anything uh, that uh, follows in some potential forgeries. And then on the decryption side, the combiner cannot uh, understand under which, of the, on, on which of the weak schemes the encryptions, uh, the combined encryption has, has been pr uh, processed. And thereby also the combined decryptions cannot um, yeah, 
prevent any forgeries of ciphertexts in transmissions. So what I essentially mean with forgeries is you see here that of course the last bit of a ciphertext can in cases C and D simply be um, manipulated and thereby forgeries can be more or less trivially produced by adversaries. And what we show in our proofs is that if a combiner co protects against such forgeries in cases C and D, this combiner cannot achieve correctness in cases uh, either uh, scheme A or scheme B is combined with a secure one. And since we, since we require both correctness and security from our combiners, such a combiner does not achieve uh, either security or correctness and thereby is not a sufficiently uh, secure or correct combiner. I will provide further details and ideas of how our proof proceeds that uses an adversary that generically breaks authenticity based on the ideas that I just sketched regarding forging ciphertexts due to the tolerance of uh, decryption or indecryption of ciphertexts in cases C and D, meaning that the weaknesses of the weak AEAD schemes combined with secure AEAD schemes can be generically exploited to break any such a combiner that only uses the encryption once and the decryption once of each underlying scheme. So this adversary proceeds as follows. It first traces the compu uh, computations inside combined encryption and decryption. These tracings can be conducted for the processes before the secure encryption and the secure decryption uh, for the synchronized case and before the secure encryption and the secure decryption on the reversed case, giving us on the reversed case even further uh, ability to trace computations even after the decryption with a weak scheme. Due to tracing all these computations, the adversary obtains all necessary information that is known here before the encryption with the weak scheme in combined encryption both in both cases in the synchronized one and in the reversed one. So if the adversary only once observed an encryption of uh, the combination of weak and secure scheme and thereby observation means that only uh, the adversary can choose a message, some nonce and some associated data and obtains a ciphertext then with all this data, the adversary obtains all information that has been known by the combiner exactly before the encryption with a weak scheme was invoked. What the adversary then does is replacing, uh, in case it was uh, an encryption under case A, this encryption with case B, which, uh, so here, the weak scheme or the, the potentially weak scheme A is replaced by scheme B which anyways equals on the encryption side uh, a replacement of case C with case D. So we can do this in either uh, direction. So either we replace D with, uh, with case D or C with D, which is equivalent to replacing A and B on the combined encryption side. But due to being in cases C or D, this, uh, this allows a ciphertext forgery, essentially processing everything after this star here in uh, the valid uh, combined encryption and then, as I said, replacing this encryption here and then processing uh, the combiner validly uh, until the end gives us a forgery with which the adversary did not obtain anything else from uh, the victims then a valid ciphertext to a chosen message on the chosen nonce and associated data. So with this forgery, the adversary invokes the combined decryption. And as we prove in our uh, paper, which you can see for the full details, um, the combined decryption cannot distinguish cases A and B from the cases C and D because combined decryption was not able to do this as well. So this gives us the, the, or this especially gives the adversary uh, an, an opportunity to in any case pro produce a valid forgery just by obtaining one chosen uh, or one uh, ciphertext on chosen inputs 
uh, of message associated, uh, associated data and nonce. With this generic adversary, we know that a combiner can not only encrypt uh, in combined encryption with each underlying scheme once and on combined decryption decrypt with each underlying scheme uh, exactly once. And as a result, as I mentioned before, our black box combiner is already optimal. You see here all the remaining uh, performances of our combiners again, as I mentioned before, the ciphertext size uh, for our second encrypt and MAC combiner is also optimal, uh, meaning that we provide uh, practical combiners for use uh, in the real world. All the details of our work can of course be found in uh, the full paper, which is available on ePrint, and you can always contact me via email or via Twitter. Thank you very much for your attention.